All right, everyone. Welcome back for the episode of Carnival Trades. Today is Friday, June 14th, 2024. If you've not done so already, please give the video a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Come find me on carnivoretrades.com for swing trading alerts, analysis, and live day trading. So excited to have everybody, uh, all the new people joining in, taking advantage of that flash sale. It's now over as of yesterday, but excited to see all the new faces in the service and um, looking ready to rock and roll as we get to the back half of June and into OPEX week. So a couple of things to discuss today here. Uh, we got to talk about rotation, uh, breadth again. So that just seems to be the, the thing that everybody wants to talk about. Um, ma uh, massive disconnect in volatility this morning from the indices. Uh, Fear Greed Index telling us something very interesting. We also have GameStop um, holding that 28 handle, 28, 29. Roaring Kitty officially did exit those uh, calls. He posted that last night and uh, put in a $4 million position. We'll talk about that as well. Also, is Bitcoin in trouble? So that will get covered at the end as always. But anyways, let's get into it here today. So markets gapping down um, on some uh, European, there's a little bit of turmoil, political turmoil going on in France, bond yields dropping there. And there was a little bit of a scare um, with the banks, uh, things of that nature. Sentiment is now in the basement in Europe. Um, maybe that's a contrarian sign, we'll see. Um, so that did gap the market down. Now, volatility, this was very interesting. So we got down and we got a lousy pullback here. And I mean, it was pretty lousy. So um, I, you know, we were in the trading room looking for 5,400 all day, like, all right, let's, we're ready to, ready to scalp this. And um, second day in a row, we got very close um, within two points and uh, could not even just pierce it. Um, again, part of that I think is light volume. And I've noticed that a lot lately with the volume being light and we can take a look at the spiders here. Um, yeah, 33, 34 million shares at four o'clock. It's very light. Considering the VIX was up 5%. We'll talk about that in a second. But um, I noticed that a lot lately. A lot of these levels are getting, are getting close. We also had a, a play on XLC this morning. And um, again, was waiting to buy just below, you know, 83 and a quarter and um, never got there. So noticing that, noticing that a lot lately with um, the volume being light, certain levels just not are hitting. Um, weak participation, but in any case, really big disconnect here with volatility. Look at the bid here on Vixie. Now Vixie is, you're not supposed to use TA on the VIX, but I like using the Vixie because it actually represents actual buyers and sellers. Um, I don't do daily chart TA on it, but just intraday. Um, it's pretty good here. And there's a pickup in volume and that's all we got, right? The VIX was up 10%, the, the VIX itself was up over 10% at one point here at about uh, yeah 10.45 the spiders were down what like three three dollars if that and we didn't even get to 5400 so there was something seriously going on here and one of the things i said was okay like if they keep bidding up vol and they can't break us down we could get squeezed hard uh if those guys are forced to cover i don't see anything i mean maybe there's something going on over the weekend that somebody knows about that's certainly a possibility, but I looked, you know, at everything and I'm, you know, I like to think I'm pretty good at figuring out if there's problems outside of, um, you know, just one area. I didn't see any problems with the banks. Yeah, they were down. KRE is down one and a quarter. That's not a problem. They got to be down like 5%. Um, when they were down in March of last year, I was one of the first ones like hanging the alarm bells, like KRE is down like 6%, guys. Why is the spiders down 1%? Um, and then the market rolled over later that day. Not seeing problems with the banks, not seeing panic. XLF down a third. Um, it's not housing. BNQ flat. XHB down 1.6. Nothing terrible. And it held the trend line by the end of the week. So I think what this was, um, was pinning. So if you think about it, today is Monday of next week in market and trading days, trading calendars. Why? Because we have next Wednesday off. Uh, because for some reason, they decided to not give us Monday off. Um, and they're just going to put it right in the middle of the week during a quarterly OPEX week, no less. So absolute, um, really odd booking choice there. But in any case, I think it's just pinning effect. Um, breadth was talked about ad nauseum here. Google, NVIDIA, Broadcom, Microsoft, Adobe having a good, uh, good bid on earnings. Netflix having a really good day. But week everywhere else, you know, Two soldiers here in the semiconductor space, green. Um, 
healthcare, fins, energy, uh, consumer discretionary industri industrials all week. Um, again, continuing to cry foul about it, but it, it's, you know, again, welcome to the last 18 months. Um, I think it's possible that could change soon. Uh, I want to talk about the fear greed index here. And, you know, will the great rotation finally take place? Um, so this, so I'm sure many of you are familiar with it. It's, you know, comical that, that it's at a 38 when we're at all-time highs in the QQQ closing at a new fresh all-time high, weekly closing all-time high as well. How can this be? This is based off of breadth. That's how they, they calculate this. So what if, what if we're just close to capitulation in small caps? Um, you know, perhaps the transports, these other sectors that have just been kind of left in the dust here. And what if we're close to euphoria and chips? Is that great rotation finally going to happen? That's a big question. I think quarterly OPEX, a lot of open interest, a um, lot of powerful flows taking place. And that's why as we get closer to OPEX, we're seeing more of that, right? More NVIDIA, more Apple, look at Apple gamma squeeze, right? Apple gamma squeezing and just more weakness. Look at IWM just can't even get out of its own way today while NVIDIA just, oh, it just gets a free, you know, couple percentage points in the morning. Um, so more of that stuff going on. We'll see if that expires with the expiry. I, I think that there's a, a decent chance that that could happen. So a couple of things to consider there. Um, GameStop here still holding on. Again, that 24 handle was really good. You know, if you played that, you're still doing pretty well. Is he going to go after July expiry? That's my question. Because he, he took the shares. Um, he made a small amount on the on the call options, but he didn't, you know, it could have gotten ugly if this broke. Um, so a good move by him to get out. Um, is he going to go after July? So as long as this is, this is holding up, um, we'll see probably in a few weeks. I, I doubt he'll do it right away, but um, maybe as we get closer to expiry. But GameStop still holding up. Just a little bit of whipsaw there. AMC down 21 cents too. But again, that's still holding up. I, I get the feeling that these aren't done yet. So um, we'll continue to keep an eye on those. And if we start to see clues, we'll certainly talk about that. All right, right now, markets still, going back to yesterday's video, still pretty extended. SPX finished down two points. The SPY managed to carve out 20, 33 cent gain. Um, so that's just a little market on close difference. Don't make too much out of that. We have an island up here. Just be careful with that. Um, that could end in mean reversion. Uh, the Qs are over three standard, or uh, yeah, basically three standard deviations away from the 20 MA. Uh, just bonkers stuff here. I don't. Do they hold? Do they keep to blow off into opex? I don't know. We could, um, but it is way overdone up here. Way overdone. So I'd be careful. You know, trail stop if you have the Qs here. I harvested my gains yesterday on the Qs. Um, so we'll see, but really crazy extension there. However, however, we have seen, and I'm just going to use the ES here. We've seen several times, one, two, three, four times, five really right here. Um, this in the last, what, seven, eight months where we did not consolidate through price, right? We consolidated through time and if you look at the ES, and the reason I'm bringing that up is because it doesn't have the gap. It, I mean, this pattern here, I mean, look at this. Right? Do you really want to, like, try fading that pattern um, without it failing first? Um, I said the same thing about this big bull flag back here. Everybody's like, oh, we're going down, we're going down. I was like, this is a bull flag. So um, just be aware of that. We can consolidate through time. We don't have to go down. I don't think there's really uh, any uh, serious danger, but the market does need to do backhand filling to go higher. That's that's my take. IWM down today. We talked about that already. Held the low um, from Tuesday, though, by the end of the week. We'll see. We'll see if that uh, theory holds up uh, in a few in a few days or in, in the next week or so. Um, Dow down 42 cents on the diamond. Still holding 385. This can still try to zigzag. So the Dow's been really choppy, but... Um, you know, it's, it's holding up right now. SMH extreme extension overbought. Um, look at the socks here, essentially back testing that um, trend line with a hanging man. And we closed down just four points there, but we didn't take out the high. Um, so just be careful on the daily for a mean reversion there. IGV up big, up one and a, uh, one and a half. Adobe big move. And again, Oracle earlier this week 
really helping out there. Speculated that the head and shoulder pattern would fail, and that's exactly what happened. Still got some resistance up here around 84, though. Transports were down big earlier. Um, it was a big concern. They sliced 14.6, held the gap, and um, yeah, closed back above 14.8. So I don't know. Did they just suck in shorts? We'll see. I'm imagining this is probably divergent here. Yeah, there you go. So we'll see. But they held up by the end of the week. And we'll just keep it simple there. All right. So something that did not hold up at, at the end of the week was the two-year yield. Now, it's on the cusp here. But um, you're going to see we're below that. Um, let me get rid of the moving averages. We're below that breakup bar low on a weekly close. Um, unless we just bid up here in the next 50, 40 minutes or so. But, I mean, it's kind of, that's failed. Um, you already have it on the 5s, 10s, and 30s. So, rates may be coming down. So, bounce may be getting a bit here. Now, I think, I think we'll still get a bounce here. I, uh, I talked about 4.2 on the 10-year. We hit it today. So, I think maybe we'll get a bounce. Um, it's certainly a, a possibility here. It's just a little beaten up lately. You could also make a case. Um, let me just clean up some of these lines here. Get rid of this one. Don't need this trend line either. But yeah, you could make it actually. Well, I don't know if you. Need, I don't even know if it's that good. I was gonna say falling wedge, but it's. I don't even know. I don't think it's that good. Either way, could get a bounce here. Four three four in the thirty year. That's the exact level we talked about. We'll see if it can bid. But um, bonds bonds acting well here. And um, the funny thing is. Yield curves are not, <laughs> so we're not getting any improvement there, even with bonds bid. So very disconnected market here. XHB, um, we talked about that a minute ago. Still um, okay, you know, was down on the day, but um, back inside of the uh, the um, triangle on the uh, weekly, and this can just you know work consolidate right through time, and uh, it can go higher if it wants. So no problems yet. Um, VNQ down here, but it's holding up, right? We hit that trend line and we're just backing off. Again, if this continues to base, it can push through that. Again, XLF down on the day, down 13 cents, but it came um, nicely off the lows by the end of the day. Technically, you have the head and shoulder in play, right? So there's your target if it plays out. But again, remember, I say this all the time. The weekly here is just, you know, it's just chop, just backing and filling. Trend is up, it's strong, so this could just fail very easily. So just be aware of that. Um, KRE is on the weaker side, still holding these pivots on a weekly close. It needs to do that. I do not want to see a weekly close below these pivots. KBE weaker, that's the same uh, head and shoulder, but again, I say this over and over, you know, look at the monthly. That's a power pattern there and the weekly as well. So daily, less major than weekly and monthly and so on. Um, broker dealers uh, backing off here again. This is just consolidation 610 is support in the short term. Monthly is very overbought though. Oil trying to base here. So I like the fake breakdown. We talked about that. You know, it could try and flag and zigzag. Um, but I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm very neutral on it. I have zero Zero desire to trade oil here except for day trading and scalps until I get a better read on it. But it's had a nice recovery. XLE has been absolutely getting pounded lately. Um, the last three days just got crushed. Look at the intraday here. Just straight beat down. You know, 15 minute, 20 MA rejection, 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 right? So I still like it down here though. So I think it's starting to get attractive. Hmm, what's what's coming up? OPEX. Um, is this a sector that's beaten down? Is it not tech? Could this be getting close to support and possibly starting to flip to leadership? Oh, I don't know. Maybe there's something to that. XOP getting into support too. And OIH is about there. Um, CCJ down a dollar. Still fine. URNM a little bit weaker. Didn't get back above that trend line. It's not the end of the world, though. You're still holding the, um, this level here. It's still okay. 
I think Spot Uranium is still pretty overbought, though. Um, and then URNJ is on the weaker side. But still holding that breakup bar in a weekly close. So you can still put in higher lows here. Um, net gas continuing to back off. Uh, I don't know. I'm just going to say like 275 right now. Is it maybe a short term level there? We'll see. This might be topped out though. I have no interest in this at the moment. Um, dollar index, again, kept saying it over and over. I can't tell you how many times. You know, there was the head and show. Oh, it's the head and shoulder patterns, head and shoulder pattern. Okay, but you're weak. I, I know I, I know. I sound like a broken record, but people, I say this because people don't listen. And a lot of newer traders, it takes a while to get it in their heads. The weekly is more dominant. And you have a massive bullish inside bar here on the weekly. Right. So I actually had a buy signal on the dollar right here at the end of the May 27th. So um, still very strong. Dollar can go higher. And uh, this starts to curl back up and gets above these pivots here. It can go a lot higher. So... Dollar still strong, gold still bear flagging, but had a good day at one and a quarter. Maybe possible a little bit adding to the risk off thing going on. So, but good good bid for gold. Um, still got that daily bear flag, but your weekly is still very strong. Again, just needs more consolidation. Silver holding the 50 MA, good job for silver there. I, I still think this is going to do more backing and filling too. Again, weekly is just this is still overbought. Just needs to catch up. Um, GDX had a modest gain after the big decline yesterday, and so did SIL. Again, I think they need to go lower too. Um, platinum holding up. I, wanted, I was hoping it would get down a little bit further here. Didn't quite get there, but I still like it around that 618 area. And then palladium here, um, flush at double bottom. I, I like that there too. Um, copper, really nothing doing. Again, I'm still looking for 425. I hope it gets down there next week. So down in a straight line would be the best scenario for a trade there um bitcoin here so is this in trouble um well we close below we it looks like we're going to close below we got till 8 p.m because bitcoin is special like that and it doesn't close at the same time equities do um but we got till 8 p.m sixty six thousand four and 52 cents so that's where it's got to close above to stay inside of that green um again even if it closes below and it fails, like it's not like, again, going to the weekly here, there's really nothing wrong. So it can just back off to 60,000 or so. Um, I think the likely path here, and I've talked about this recently is, is it just so, it's still, it's had such a good run off the lows. You gotta digest that at some point. So this moving average has gotta catch up. It can just do this and then just, break up later this year. So I'm thinking a summer of digestion is starting to look more likely on Bitcoin. And possibly, again, it's, um, let me use the weekly here. It's a little premature, but we could just start saying like, possibly, you know, some type of a tightening range. It doesn't have to be tight, but it obviously makes it better if that happens. But um, just something to keep an eye on there. I, d I think this is going to digest, though. Um, that said, again, like I've been saying recently, like some of the Bitcoin miners are still acting well. CLSK um, is above that pivot from Tuesday, whereas Bitcoin is nowhere near it. Mara, um, even Riot holding up. We'll get coin here. And like especially like the weekly. That's still pretty tight. And MSTR still also. So some of the miners, you know, maybe it's a false signal here on Bitcoin and we're seeing, um, you know, money go into that, that sector. So, but anyway, it, Bitcoin's fine. So, all right. <laughs> so again, next week, OPEX, remember that there's going to be a lot of pinning effects. Um, I think big tech continues to get these flows until um, that is over with. We'll see. Does the great rotation finally take place? Um, does Roaring Kitty go back into call options? I don't think he will next week. I think if he's going to do it, it'll be a little bit closer to July, but um, either way, lots of stuff to keep us interested here. Uh, in the markets, again, look for some main reversion or at least backing and filling as we're still pretty stretched, especially in technology. Anyways, guys, I'm going to wrap up here. You guys take care. Come find me on conovertrades.com. I'll see you guys all next week.